Good morning, everybody. We've got just a quick little project here. We got this. Uh, this is the screw to a jack. Now, normally, it's just a trailer jack. You would uh, take something like this and just put a whole new jack on it. But they tell me this one's built into the trailer in such a way that it's about possible to get out. So you can see it bent and snapped right there. Um, it's pretty simple. I just got to turn this thing to that diameter and drill it for a uh, press fit for a dowel pin. Now the one part that's kind of interesting is they've cut it off from here, but it's got this flat on the end. Now initially I thought, oh, it's got a machine flat, but it's not. That's a, uh, it's been stamped flat and it's a stop to keep this screw from being able to come out at the nut come out of the nut on the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and make the thing and then I'm gonna go over to my 75 ton press and see if it's uh, capable of replicating that smashed spot if it isn't we'll take it over to a bigger shop with a bigger press but I think 75 tons will rep uh, replicate that well enough Interesting. I'm coming up uh, short based on what the dial said, so I'm going to double check this now. And okay, I'm not chucking it tight enough, and because it's left-handed thread, it was screwing it into the chuck. I've had that happen before, 
say, I'm like, how did this have the I was trying not to grab it too tight because I didn't want to mar up the threads, but without realizing it, as I was cutting across, that thing was threading itself into the shock. All right, let's try this again. All right, now I will zero my dial again. That was really baffling me for a second. How on earth, if it didn't repeat, it didn't come back to zero. Better. I'm not going crazy after all. This is the reason you double check stuff though. I mean, I thought as I was measuring it, like, well, I know my lathe is on, why would I measure that? That's why. Let's double check here. Yep, that time it stayed put. All right. So we got a good 200 thousandths to go. We're going to 5 eighths of an inch in the air. wants to move, we're going to not take quite such aggressive cuts. I don't want it to move again if I can help it. Taking 50 thou on a side here. have a break by the way if you uh, reverse the handle see how bad it deflected so I've got 0.655 about three thousandths worth of deflection what we'll do now is go ahead and make a cut across there without changing anything. Take a spring cut, as they call it, and just see where we're actually at. saying this thing does have a, a brake on it. Uh, the clutch lever up is, you know, clutch engaged and if you go to the center it's neutral, down it's brake. But like most of my other machines, I don't like replacing parts. I'd rather take the time to let it spin down on its own. So very rarely do I use that brake. Now 
nominally 5 eighths, but it's a little bit under, so we're going to go ahead and take it, they're a little bit under because I don't know what goes on it, and I don't want to give them trouble. I need to take a good 30 thousandths, yeah. Something else you might notice is that I do not linger on the clutch. I, basically, I bring it in just enough to take the slack out of the gears and then slap her in. Um, any clutch lasts much longer without slippage. The only thing I'm trying to do is avoid doing is slamming the gear train. So put just a little load on and then snap her in. Your whole system will last a lot longer than if you slip it in or I just just slam it in from a dead stop as bad. about a thousand deflection in about that length. We'll take... I want to take another spring cut and I don't want to shoot past my number. some kind of a handle but I don't really know it might be a drive gear depending on if this is one of those 90 degree jack setups and if their gear has a bore that's uh, dead on they might have this undersized so that the gear is a slip fit on there find a file and we'll touch that up. I'll be right back. So, my dad showed me when I was a kid, by the way, you're filing a lathe, you never, ever, ever hold this thing in the palm of your hand. If it catches, it'll drive that tang right through you. So I'm always holding them off the sides like this, and then I also never stand in line with it. I stand off towards the tailstock end, try and raise the rest one hand down here on the bed of blade. And uh, I'd like to not have any hold punch in.
these are edges here. I don't want anybody to get cut handling this thing later. Alright, well there's that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the uh, cross hole. This is a piece of, I think, three foot uh, threaded rod. And my thinking is that I'll go drill this cross hole before I cut the rod, just in case anything goes wrong, so that I've got the option of chopping this off and moving back. I don't know. You'd like to believe you never make mistakes, but uh, surprise, surprise, I actually do once in a while. So anyway, I'll bring you back when I get set up for that. Okay, now, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but uh, if I have, forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but, so, center drills, despite the fact that me and every other machinist uses them for pilot drilling, I shouldn't say every other machinist, there's some ones that are more professional out, out there, use these for pilot drilling, but they're not actually correct for pilot drilling. Um, I read a really interesting article that uh, if you just punch in all the way up to the um, center part of the drill, that you actually break your drill bits down, that the diameter of that tip and the angle, like it doesn't match the drill, it's really rough on drill bits. So when I'm doing stuff like this, I have quit, I used to like drill all the way in there thinking, oh, I'm doing a big pilot. Now basically all I do is I come down and make a nice spot there and that's it. I should get some actual piloting drills and uh, do this the correct way but I haven't got around to that yet. So. Basically that's all I do. Make a little pilot dimple and call it quits. Now one of the things I've got to see if I have a little unsure of this is if I have got a reamer that's an undersized quarter inch I'm not a jig and fixture guy those guys have 
all the nice undersized reamers, and I'm afraid that my collection is going to be heavy to unsized reamers. All right. So, I think I have uh, finally identified an undersized reamer. You all didn't get to see the absolute tear the shop apart that it entailed to try and find that sucker. It was ridiculous. It's embarrassing, to be honest with you, but I just cannot find half the stuff yet. You know, I'm still getting moved in and like that was a box of reamers that I knew existed, but I couldn't for the life of me remember where. But finally figured out what I had done with them. So anyway, let me uh, go hit the VFD and tell it to go again. get too carried away here and pull this out of here. I want to go find myself a quarter inch dowel pin now and verify that it actually fits. Or in there again. I make sure it isn't a long paper reamer. I didn't travel all the way to the bottom of the reamer stroke. Just make sure. Yeah. Some of these, if they're designed to be hand reamers, have a really long taper on the nose. And I didn't think about that when I just popped in there. I want to make sure that it uh, really legitimately made it all the way to the bottom. And this reamer, the marking on the shank is wore off from probably people spinning it too many times. So I'm having to, yeah, it's a one thou under base of measurements, but it's a little tricky to tell that because it, uh, <clears throat> you know, you're trying to spin it and measure the peak of the cutting edge. So it's tough to know that you're exactly where you want to be. But that said, it doesn't fall through the hole, so <clears throat> we know for sure it wasn't a non-sized reaver that I'm just measuring wrong. Alright. Well, I think we're ready to go do some uh, cutting and then uh, smash the end. I'll bring you back for that. Alright, we're getting ready to trim this thing off. Um... I'm going with 18 inches, not because I'm convinced that's exactly the length it was, but because I'm assuming that it was a nominal length. It's so bent up and broken three pieces that it's hard to tell, but 18 inches of work, it's a jack, so I mean, we aren't on rocket science sort of uh, project here. So we're going to just uh, let this kidder, let this saw carve its way through here. cutting pretty slow because I got a brand new blade on here and they need to kind of uh, 
wherein you're actually technically supposed to cut, I forget, there's instructions, I, I don't remember now, it's like you're supposed to cut a two inch thick chunk of four inches worth of two inch thick mild steel or something like that, but unfortunately, uh, I never actually do that, I just take it easy the first few cuts, but this is pretty mild steel this screw's made out of, so it's not like it's anything crazy. All right. Over to the press. All right, so I fibbed, not to the press yet. I want to clean the end of this up a bit. I would normally stick something like this in the lathe and turn the end off square, but seeing as I'm getting ready to smash it anyways, I don't think we're going to bother with that. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times I have removed my fingerprints with a belt sander when I was a kid doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing, but I'm sure all the rest of you have tales to tell that look like that as well, so. All right, so here we are. The only machine in this shop that terrifies me worse than this press is the big lathe. They both have major, major capabilities of uh, hurting you bad. So what I got going on here is I don't want to destroy my blocks. I got this piece of junk steel here, and I got another piece of junk steel, and we're going to try just coming down and mashing and seeing what wins here. So. Interesting. You can tell this piece of steel is a little harder than that piece of steel, but I'm uh, pretty pleased with that actually. I would say that's uh, very close to factory level results, so we're going to go with that. All right, well, there's the finished results. You can see. I'm basically identical with the exception that they're flat. The two flats are dead parallel with each other. Mine's got taper to it because I didn't have an actual die for stamping that. But all it's doing is stopping this nut. And they've actually got a pretty big relief at the end of the threads. So it'll come up and hit that thing, I'm assuming. Uh, the shoulder and this relief before it actually gets into the threads. So... Anyway, that's it. I think this will be uh, the end of this video for today, but you can see it ain't anything crazy. But this is the kind of weird stuff, though, that you get into just a small town job shop where somebody needs it fixed and, uh, you know, they don't really have a lot of other alternatives, so they drag this thing into me. So that's it. Catch you guys next time.